At the time in Louisiana, there was the road system was atrocious. And if you have people ever wonder why we have what we call these geographic colleges, it was because you could not travel from here to Baton Rouge to go to LSU. The roads were too bad. So by putting these strategically located regional colleges, it gave the kids on the farm a chance to get an education. There had long been discussion of placing some type of institution of higher education in the central Florida parishes. And there were a group here in Hammond, again, following the same in the, the ways of Charles E. Kate and others, you know, who wanted to attract things. Uh, some initial state investigators about this had offered the opportunity to Amit at first, and then famously in the Amit City Council meeting, the council voted overwhelmingly no, because they didn't want the character of the town changed. Hammond, though, seeking to grow, develop, not having qualms about people from the north, whatever it may be coming in, enthusiastically embraced the opportunity. And though they had some trouble with the school board in the parish at the time, and in fact, it, it came, you know, almost, uh, as I said, fisticuffs in the school board meeting as they discussed it, which us here in Tanchebo Parish know nothing about, of course, and everything. So they got together anyway, and they went to the people of Ward 7 and Ward 8, and they said, if you will agree to pass a tax, we can start a college. It was a junior college, and that was all it was intended to be. The people voted for the tax, and it started right where on Morris Street, where Neal Corporation is today. That was the first site. There was a, a faculty of five, and I think the first class had 40 people in it. Southeastern came here because our ancestors wanted it, because of the business community in the 1920s, in the 1930s, in the 1940s, kept passing bond issues to increase the university to the next level. And it began to grow very rapidly. And what's remarkable, literally from that first meeting, my understanding has always been that from that first meeting they had in Hammond to discuss it, to the time they opened the doors on the college initially was less than one year. That, that's how deeply the people were eager to see that happen. In 1928, they sought permission to become a four-year college. And they bought what was a, a summer place belonging to a prominent New Orleans family at the end of Pine Street. And it had a two-story house on it and a barn and a servant's quarters. So those became the original buildings at the southeastern, current southeastern campus. Some years later, before the state put, provided funds for a permanent building on the campus. And while that building was still being built, Dr. Lucius McGee, a local physician, who was, died. And so they decided to name the first permanent building for Dr. Lucius McGee, and it's still in use today. When Huey Long was assassinated in 35, the Lieutenant Governor Richard W. Lesh became governor, and he realized that Huey had sewn up LSU. I mean, LSU was Huey Long's school. So Lesh decided he would make this one his school. And he learned that Southeastern played football games where Southeastern and Mims Hall uh, were located, dormitories opposite one another in a horseshoe drive. That was the first football field. And Lesh saw the crowds. He decided that what Southeastern needed was a football stadium. I mean, in 1937 was a big, I would say it was a big year because that's when Strawberry Stadium was built. And with Strawberry Stadium came dormitories, came a new snack bar, came a the Student Union Memorial Building. Both sides of the stadium had dormitory rooms. The bookstore was there, the post office was there. So 1937, and I think maybe a year or two later, McGee Hall was built. And that really, you know, once you start getting permanent, facilities, it really begins to grow. And then World War II came, and so Southeastern lost its male population for all practical purposes. Male students all went to war. And as soon as the war ended, we had a new president, and he was Gladney J. Tinsley, nicknamed Gus. And we had a congressman here who had lived in Hammond, his name was James Hobson Morrison. And Jimmy Morrison's father was an early store owner here, a very prominent citizen. And Jimmy went to Congress about 1940. And so he didn't go to war. He stayed in the Congress. 
And when the war was over, Dr. Tinsley went to Congressman Morrison and said they're tearing down all these army camps and so forth in Mississippi. Let me have some of those buildings because when the war ended, the GI Bill made it possible for these young men who had gone off to fight the war to go to college. And, and so we had, the campus was flooded with war surplus buildings. And when I was a student there, you took classes in, in McGee Hall or Meade Hall or the G buildings, which were one story frame buildings and there would be a classroom at each end and two faculty offices in between. And there were rows of them on side, and there would be a sidewalk running between them. And then in 1970, it was, it was given university status and has continued to grow since. Now, it doesn't take much imagination to see the profound effect that Southeastern had on Hammond. And here's why, for several reasons, besides the job opportunities, it offers entertainment in the way of sports and athletic events, plays and dance reviews and recitals, concerts. It also brings into the community highly educated, creative people, artists, and it, uh, it just makes the community a whole lot better place for everyone. Friendship Oak. A lot of people have asked about that. That's really a symbol of Southeastern. I mean, there's been a lot of courtship in Friendship Oak. And as they say, people just slide by it and brush shoulders with it going to and from class today. It's a symbol of endurance. Oak is a symbol of endurance. And let's say that's, that epitomizes Southeastern. Southeastern has endured through thick and thin. You know, we've all been through through really rough times, uh, education, funding. We've been through good times. And Southeastern has endured and is what it is today. You got 15,000 students basically. You got Southeastern's largest employer, I think, in Tanchebo Parish. I mean, just those two factors alone, you're throwing in uh, a lot of extra income, a lot of extra money uh, into the parish. Just the one football playoff game Southeastern uh, hosted a couple years ago, two weekends we hosted playoff games. I think a multi million dollar income just over two weekends for the parish, and that's just off two sporting events. And just the fact that you know, you bring in teams, it's just the economy. People come in from outside, it gives you a rallying point for, for athletics, for all different phases. People come in, travel in from all games. It's, and then without all the people coming in from outside, just within the community, the number of people and alumni in, in this area that contribute to the economy of Tanchebo Parish and the city of Hammond and South Tanchebo it's just amazing, and I think that's where Southeastern plays the biggest part. It is an integral part of the economy of Southeast Louisiana.